my Sony a7S III just became new again. Well, sort of. Sony finally released a firmware update for the a7S III, the A1 and the A7 IV with a variety of improvements depending on the camera. But for the a7S III specifically, before we knew what we actually was getting, the most anticipated updates were probably 4K DCI, true 24p with a shutter speed of 1 over 48th of a second, breathing compensation, custom LUTs, shutter angle, cine EI mode, open gate, and for some, animal eye autofocus in video mode. You'll probably know how much I've gone on about the lack of animal eye autofocus in video on the A7S III. I don't know if everything on that list actually was anticipated, but it would have been really nice to get all that though. But out of all that, what did we actually get in this new firmware update? Well, we got focus breathing compensation. We now have focus breathing compensation with selective Sony lenses on the a7s III. This is only applicable for video as the breathing compensation removes any change in the field of view as you change focus. Depending on the lens you're using, the focus breathing may vary, but at least now the a7s III is up to par with other newer Sony cameras. We also got 4K DCI. Regular 4K UHD 16 by 9 aspect ratio is 2160 by 3840. Now with the DCI 4K, also known as C4K or Cinema 4K, we're now able to film in 2160 by 4096. So we get a slightly wider aspect ratio and this aspect ratio is what you would see when viewing a 4K film at the cinema. The camera is now compatible with the Creator app that replaced the supposedly terrible Imaging Edge app. I can't actually say that much about the Creator app as I haven't used it that much, but as I understand it, it is a lot better than the old Imaging Edge app. Now, I didn't use that app much either, and until now, if I've been in need of an external monitor, I've only used my Atmos Ninja 5. Of course, I can't change the camera settings, start and stop recording and take photos with the Atmos Ninja 5, so I do see the benefits of being able to remotely control your camera with the app, for self-portraits, for example. So if the Creator app is much better, it is really nice to see the a7S III is now compatible with it. We now have timecode through the multi-micro USB terminal. We now can use timecode by getting an accessory to plug into the multi-micro USB terminal. This isn't something I personally am in need of using, I just sync up the footage using visuals from the audio tracks or I let Final Cut Pro do it for me by making a multicam clip. What is important when making a multicam clip though is that you have audio in your video files as this is what the NLE is using to sync up the clips. But for bigger productions I guess this is a good feature to now have in the a7S III. You can now set the shutter speed in the a7S III at 1 over 48th of a second when filming in 24 frames per second, instead of the 1 over 50th of a second that we have used until now. But the two features I'm most excited about is one, the new user interface for video that now matches my other Sony cameras. It is so nice to have moved all the information that was stuck in the middle of the screen to the top and the bottom of the screen. This way you're not that distracted when filming and can focus more on composition and how the shot actually looks. Another thing that we also got with the new UI is the swipe menus on the screen and the capability to change settings just by pressing the screen. I've seen that the touch and swipe menus have been bothersome for some people, especially on some Facebook groups, when trying to touch to focus, as the camera has registered the touch to focus as a swipe and not as a focus touch. But if this is a problem, you can disable the swipe menus in the settings. 
I personally like the swipe menu and the option of changing settings by touching the screen and being able to stop and start recording just by pressing the screen. My Canon cameras have had this for many years and I'm glad Sony also is implementing this in their new cameras and now also in the Sony a7S III. And the second thing that I'm most excited about and that actually came as a surprise to me is the feature of the shutter closing when turning off the camera. You need to activate this in the settings, but having this extra protection in front of your sensor limits dust to get in there when changing lenses. Now, I only wish that my A6700 that I'm filming on right now would get this in a future firmware update also. So that's what we got in the A7S III firmware update. An update long awaited, but we didn't get custom LUTs. We didn't get animal eye autofocus in video mode. We didn't get shutter angle, cine EI, open gate, but I'm still happy. Just the updated UI makes the A7S III feel like a new camera again. And it matches up with my a7R5 and my A6700. And I guess Sony is keeping some features specifically for the cinema line. If you have an A7S III and haven't updated yet, I'll leave links to the firmware download page and the DCI license download page down below. Because yeah, you do need to download a separate license for the DCI 4K and then install that separately after updating the firmware on the A7S III. And also take note of your customization of the camera. All the customized buttons and settings and so on. Because after updating the camera, it will delete everything. And it doesn't help uploading the settings with the older firmware to your SD card either, because after the installation, the camera won't be able to read those files. And if you have Mac with the M chip, it's a little bit tricky to update because of the firewall in the Mac. So you need to change some settings in the computer also before updating. But I'll leave a link to Lee Zavitt's video on the update down below, because he walks you through the firmware installation process with no problem. So that's it for this video. I do hope you got something out of it. If you have updated your A7S III, Please leave a comment on your feelings about it. What do you like? What didn't you like? What was missing in your opinion? And have you had any hiccups after updating your camera? I would love to see what you think about it. So like this video if you liked it by hitting the thumbs up button down below. Subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. And maybe I will see you in another video.